one thing you want to check out on here for sure before you install your starter is that this contact surface right here is not painted and you can see in this case whoever had this motor before me painted this thing orange so the problem you'll have install this starter back here you only have power your ground is this contact point between the block if you have a poor ground here the car will either not start or it'll act like it's got a dead battery or it'll start and then won't start hot so this is a really common mistake here i've done it i've chased myself around in circles trying to figure it out but make sure this is a nice clean surface make sure your starter is nice and clean when you put it on there too it doesn't hurt just so you have a good ground um, we've talked about it in the other videos but you're going to want to use a late model uh, short starter um, you can use a 2008 Silverado starter which will have a threaded stud for the solenoid if you get a 2009 and up Silverado or a fifth gen Camaro this little stud will be a single pole terminal which you'll have to purchase separately these are just a little easier to work with so this starter gives you lots of clearance on the mount it makes it a lot easier to remove and install this in the car um, the long starter will actually clear with the motor um, but this you can see the hot wires will be very close to the motor mount so I recommend everybody use the shorter starter while you're at it you can go ahead and clean off wherever you're going to use as a uh, ground stud too is this going to be enough? <clears throat> doesn't look like very much what are you talking about? Oh yeah, it is. It's yeah, to keep, there. Yeah. It's all the way to there. Yeah. On the X. Which place? Because I got long bolts. I got long bolts. Use the ones that Circle D gave you. I don't give you. These are flex plate bolts. Oh. You have to use a spacer. The long bolts. I do. Why'd you buy long bolts? I have questions. The long bolts? No, the space. It says the snout's long on there, so that doesn't mean. What are you talking about? You know, you don't want to use the spacer because the the converter has it built into the plate. It's built into the cover. Yeah, but isn't it just the snout on this is really long? So there's enough room. Like the spacer sitting here wouldn't hurt anything. But you use the spacer with a flat, right? Well, it goes on this side of the flex plate. I don't think that's correct. Yeah, there's two different combinations. On a flat one, it goes. Behind. I think if you put the spacer on it, you're not going to be able to tighten it. I think the torque converter is going to be like an eighth of an inch, if not more. Like it's going to be more, probably like three eighths of an inch off the. You got any probably some used ones somewhere. There might even be a set of ARPs. Mike's using a Circle D, one DX. We picked this one up from Caesar. Is this used or new? Or Caesar just had it. Yeah, so Mark didn't want to wait, so he just bought one from them. But we are dealers uh, for Circle D, so if you need a converter for your setup, um, shoot us a message. Uh, we can ship them directly to your door. So just let us know. We'll get you anything you need. Someone had a field day painting this block. I've got my ARP. Bolts. Those will work. I mean, that's better than long ones. Oh, uh, no, I'm still look at the shoulder on it. That's still too long. So, when you're getting ready to put this motor in, one thing you want to do is you want to make sure that when you put my motor mounts on here, you leave them loose enough where they can slide. That way, you have some adjustability in the car. So go ahead and put all eight bolts in, just snug. Um, most likely, the motor is going to be in the far forward position, but it's a lot easier to get everything in if you leave them loose. Um, then also makes it a lot easier. Go ahead and pull the steering shaft off. There's one bolt in here. Sometimes it's a little tight because the splines. Go ahead and pry that off. Put it up on the side, you can tuck it up here, or just leave it down here out of the way. Should be fine. Not if you're using a 4L80E like we are, or you're going to use a T56. I suggest that you pick up a. Uh, aftermarket transmission mount. This is the part number I normally use. Comes in a kit like this with the mount, preload plate, and the hardware that's actually going to screw into here. Um, 
you can use the factory mounts, but they're really soft rubber. Um, this seems to work better in our application and it works out with my mount as well. So we're gonna go ahead and install this up underneath the car and uh, that way we can get the engine all aligned correctly so we can start putting the accessory drive on and continue with our wiring. All right, so quick little update. We're gonna be going over to fuel system today. So on my car, this is a LS3 intake. I'm using the factory LS3 rails. Um, this car was an N51, so I have these funky stainless fuel lines that we'll be dealing with. I'm actually gonna be removing all these and running an AN line from the port near the tank all the way up front. So on my car, we're gonna be running a, uh, what you'd call a deadheaded rail return system. So I'm gonna have this aeromotive fuel pressure regulator mounted over here on the fender. I'm gonna have my main fuel feed line coming in to one of these side ports here. The other line is gonna go out to the rail on this EFI quick disconnect. Then I'm gonna use the bottom return port to go back to the tank through a flex fuel sensor and then into a bulkhead connector that I'm gonna add in the pump side of the tank. So we're gonna get everything mounted up here, make up some uh, PTFE lines, get this flex fuel sensor plumbed in, and then get the car up in the air and start working on it underneath. All right, so a little bit of change of plans here. I forgot we had this uh, fuel test straighter valve on the LS3 rails. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this core, do a four to six AN adapter and use this as a return. So we're gonna have our fuel feed coming in from the fuel pumps to here, which will go to the crossover. And then our return line will be here going to this side of the regulator. The lower side will be the return going through the flex fuel sensor back to the tank. Next thing we're gonna go over while the front end of this car is apart, um, and the heater core lines. So on your LS water pump, you have your five ace and your three quarter heater connections on the passenger side of the water pump. On the BMW, two lines that are coming out of the firewall back there behind the driver's side valve cover. We have our five ace and our three quarter line. Some of the cars have a thermostatic valve that mounts in this area right here. Um, this car does not have one. So what we'll be doing is just cutting the ends of these fittings off using a, a coupler and some five ace and three quarter heater line, routing this down and across the K-member up to that side of the water pump. So we'll get that done now. Got our hoses run here. We're gonna tie these to the K-member with a P-clamp. Uh, next thing we're gonna talk about is the expansion tank. So the easiest way I've found to do this, um, you can either tee it into the upper or lower radiator hoses to fill it, um, or you can go ahead and tee it to the heater hoses. Um, I'm gonna show you on a Tahoe or a Silverado where GM would do theirs. And we're gonna go outside right now and look at Frank's Tahoe. All right, so this is Frank's Tahoe. You can see the stock expansion tank here. If you look down here, this hose goes around, tees in right there. So that's on the front three quarter inch port on uh, the heater uh, line here. So we're gonna go ahead and tee the BMW tank just like GM did there. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna use one of the lines that came off of over here on the original heater. These have a quick disconnect and a straight connector that'll fit onto here. So what we're gonna do is cut this band clamp like we've shown you in pre previous videos, uh, put this on the tank, then we're gonna get a three quarter inch T and we're gonna plumb that, do a little loop and plumb it in right here somewhere that fits nicely. The other part of the wiring that you're gonna need to do down here for the starter, uh, the red wire that we ran through the harness, this is gonna connect to the small stud or the single connector on your starter. Um, you're gonna need to plug in your crank sensor before you put your starter in. And then you're also gonna run your heavy gauge main power wire from up there on the positive stud to down here on the starter. So underneath the car, we have a 4L80 transmission in this one. So to make one of these transmissions fit, there's a few clearancing items you need to do to the actual chassis. So on the passenger side of the car, what you're gonna see if you're looking straight up this area of the chassis is gonna come in contact with the pan. Um, so if you reference the mount bolts, let me get a tape measure so we can get something. So our transmission mount 
it's going to be mounted on these two bolts right here. So if we go ahead and get some dimensions. So from the edge of this first bolt, about three inches over to about 12 inches over from the bolt. So that's three to 12. You're going to notch out this lower section of material. So there's two layers here. So you're just going to cut out this outer layer. So make a cut along the top, cut along the bottom, cut the two edges in. What I like to do is go ahead and grind or round these corners over. Um, and then you're gonna to wanna to try to insulate it, keep it from rusting. I shot this with some rubberized undercoating. So that's what you're gonna to need to do on the passenger side. Also on this transmission, there's a boss right here. You can see I've cut that boss down and clearance this top edge. This transmission is drooped right now, not on the mount. So we can show you what you're talking about. So then on the driver's side, the other area you're gonna need the clearance is gonna be around the shift lever. So we'll go ahead and get you some dimensions from here as well. So we're gonna go from this rear bolt right here, from that edge. So you're gonna start your notch about nine inches and go to 12 inches. Uh, again, cut out that first layer of material pound your corners down so they're flat and cover that in some rubberized undercoating. The other area of concern is the electrical connector on the transmission that's normally here. On this car, I went ahead and made a bushing, and put it in this deep pan to move this connector down here, and I'm gonna use a freeze plug to plug this hole. If you don't do this, when this transmission's raised up, the edge of this pan is about a half inch below here and this entire connector is in this area. So what you're going to have to do is notch the lower layer out similar to this and then you're going to have to pound uh, the in inner layer up to give you a little clearance and then you're going to go ahead and plug your connector into here and then raise the transmission up and bolt up your mount. If you ever need to get to this connector you're going to have to drop the transmission down to get this connector undone. So we're trying this out. I've seen a couple other people do this. We just move this connector down to the pan. Um, it's an O-ring seal. There's no pressure in here, but it is holding back transmission fluid. Um, and then we have a plug here. So if this works out well. We'll probably sell this bushing or some kind of kit where you can move this connector down here. Um, helps out with space. The other thing you're gonna wanna do for clearance on a 480, there's an ear right here on the transmission. Typically, we just go ahead and cut these flush with the block when it's bolted up to the car. This gives you more room for exhaust on both the driver's side and over here on the passenger side. So get that cut off. Um, your inspection cover will still go on and get bolted up to the transmission. The other thing to go over while we're down here are your transmission cooler fittings. You're gonna wanna use these banjo style fittings. There's one here. I want up at the front there that's very tight and hard to see but as you can see it's very tight in here so when the transmission is down you're going to want to go ahead and hook up your transmission cooler lines and route them forward before you take this transmission and put it up uh, otherwise these are basically impossible to get to so on the 480d transmission what we normally recommend people to use are these true cool 40k transmission coolers they're giant uh, but you'll never have a problem with temps. So on my car, since we're gonna have an intercooler, I wanted to mount it up at the top section in front of the condenser so I can get fresh air from the grills, um, but the power steering cooler was in the way. So on mine, we're gonna go ahead and delete the power steering cooler, at least the factory one. We're gonna run a smaller one or a different shape one, maybe in one of the grills in the bumper. So I'm gonna cut these off so I have room to mount this cooler right here without interfering and then we can run the lines down and under uh, through the cam member back to the transmission so outside of all the technical stuff mike's been working on um, some aesthetics he got a new what is this, this is a 135, 135 rear so he bought a new bumper uh painted it out literally in front of the shop and he started 
wet sanding it and getting cleaned up. He also bought this pretty dope carbon diffuser. It looks pretty nice. Uh, I think we've already posted, I haven't really said anything about it, but it's got a set of Apex wheels on it now. Looking real nice. He came in here and made himself a little shifter cable mount. And you've seen his connector through the pan there instead of going uh, through the side. So he made a, a little plug to plug the old hole. So everything's tucked in here. I think we've got some footage of him doing all of this stuff. So I'm gonna include all that in here. We're just kind of doing a little overview. We've got starter wire terminated and loomed nice and clean all that stuff's hooked up air conditioning is in the car got a bunch of footage on that that we'll be going over what else did we do camber plates are in it because these are 17 by nines all the way around and they do fit but with the ls in them it's like on top of the of the fender basically so a good bump would have probably rubbed so Mike had to do a little bit of cambering. What else have you done on this thing? Show that shift linkage. Yeah, show the shift linkage. Cooler lines. Power steering cooler, move it all the way. Yeah, I got all the footage from where we were doing that, so throw all that stuff together. <coughs> yeah, converters bolted up. I don't think I showed the rear div adapter and flange. What is oh this is this is your this is the one that we made and yeah so this is his adapter. Do we have a part number for that? It's on the website. Is it? Okay. What about the yoke? The, the companion flange? Yeah, this is yeah. spicer, right? Yeah, the part number for that's on the page. I sell that flange. Okay. That's a spicer part number. Nice. That's a 1350 companion. So, super short drive shaft. Yeah, I think it's only 43 inches. <clears throat> so this thing's real close. And you didn't buy a front bumper, right? That was only just John bought one? Just John bought one, yeah. I already had the same bumper. It's got a little damage on it, but it came out of the car. Yes. Today we're going over uh, the AC and the accessory drives. Um, what we do today, we're going over our accessory drive and our AC setup. Woo!